So now I'm going to show you an example of how to use these, um, well, these equations of accelerated motion. So in the last video, I was just showing you about these four equations here. So we've got V equals U plus AT, we've got this one and this one and this one. And it all depends on what you've been given and what you're looking for. Now, you could spend weeks on just trying to look at every single type of question you can use with these. But I'm going to give you two examples. Um, now, I always like to use examples that are either totally ridiculous, like with dinosaurs or with robots or something weird like that, or I use examples from my everyday life that I've actually experienced, just because I think a lot of the examples in textbooks are really boring. It's always like a box is here or, you know, a ball rolls down a hill, and I think those are pretty boring. So I'm going to give you an example that's related to something that actually happened to me in real life. Uh, so you're driving in your car and you're initially at some speed. Let's say it's 28 meters per second. And suddenly a large moose runs across the road ahead of you. Now, um, what you do then is you slam on your brakes until your car is at rest. And we're going to assume that you miss the moose, of course. We're going to assume that you don't run into this uh, animal. And while you're braking, though, the question is, how long does it take to stop the car if the distance traveled is 15 meters? So what we're assuming then is that you're driving in your car. Uh, maybe I'll make this a different color here. So let's say, so this is you in your car. You're going to see why I'm not an artist. Um, so maybe this is your car here like this. There's a reason why no one's ever really invited me to go to art school. I don't know why this car is so short, but for some reason it is. And here's me in my car. Now I'm driving uh, this way and I'm actually driving at a speed of 28 meters per second. That's initially. That's what I'm doing, so to speak, as I'm just driving along here. So I'm just driving along in my car, going really fast, like this. I don't know why my car is so short, but let's just assume it is. Uh, then I see a moose in front of me. Now my moose, uh, if you don't know what a moose is, it's an animal that's pretty much just got like really thin little stick legs here. So I'm just going to draw like four little stick legs. It's like a big giant sort of giant version of a cow kind of thing. I mean, it's this big animal like this and it's got these big giant uh, antlers here. And they're kind of ugly, but I like them a lot. So this is what a moose looks like. Now you do not want to hit a moose. Well, first of all, just because they're nice animals and uh, well, I don't think you should ever kill those animals. But if you're driving in Canada, for example, or in Scandinavia, there are lots of moose around. Uh, for those who don't know what a moose is, uh, by the way, my wife and I have had conversations about this because uh, I live in Denmark now, and they use really weird words for a moose. They pretty much think that a moose and an elk is the same animal, or at least in Canada, they're very different animals. And we have a different animal that's called a moose, and we have a different one called an elk, but oh well. Um, so I just found a quick little video. So this is, this is what happens in Newfoundland, for example. That's one of the provinces in Canada. And they have these big signs all over the place saying, you know, don't run into a moose. You can see my version of a moose is not very nice compared to theirs. But in any case, I mean, they tell you, you know, watch out, do not run into them. I mean, they're big, giant animals, um, which is actually pretty crazy. So you do not want to hit one of these guys. But they tend to just hang out because, well, Canada has lots of these animals and uh, they're nice to see. Just try not to hit them with your car. Uh, a reason really not to hit them is actually physics-wise. Uh, if you look at this, this thing has really tall but thin legs. And if you actually ran into it, it turns out your car would basically take out its legs and its massive heavy body would come right into the windshield and kill you. So, well, there's another reason not to hit the moose. Not just because you don't want to hit them, but also because you don't want to hurt the people in the car. So let's assume then you see this thing, you go, holy sh bleep, you know, and you say, oh my God, there's a moose. So you slam on the brakes and you travel a certain distance before you stop. So we're going to assume then that you travel a distance of, let's say you stop just in front of this lovely moose here and your speed, uh, sorry, your distance traveled is 15 meters. So I think it helps so just to try to draw or understand the situation. So now that we've gone from the words to the situation here, the question is then, how long does it take to stop the car? And a nice trick that I like to show my students, um, especially if we're using these equations here in this format with U, V, and A, and S, and T like this. Well, U, V, A, T, S, how I wrote it. But I like to just tell students, okay, if you see a question like this with constant acceleration, then what you do is you think UVAST. That's just a little trick for remembering it. 
Now you've asked, it sounds like a word. It's not really, but uh, here's what I do. I look at this then and I just make myself a table of, remember, U is initial speed, this is final speed, this is acceleration, this is displacement, and this is time. Now the only thing allowed to go into this table is proper units, which means if this was in kilometers per second or something like that, then I would have to convert it, because only things that are in meters or meters per second or meters per second squared in this case, just meters or just seconds. Those are the only things allowed to go here. And what I do is I just write down a list of what I know. Now I'm going to assume I'm going right just the way I've drawn it. So if I've drawn it that way, my initial speed is 28 meters per second. Now I sometimes get a little bit sloppy here. I just say 28 because it's assumed, at least in my own head, that anything that goes here is in proper units. So I won't actually say 28 meters per second because that's the only thing that's allowed to go in U. Maybe your teachers want you to write the units, then go ahead, of course you should. But I'm just showing you how I like to do these. Now my final speed, let's think now, the car is at rest. Rest implies that the final speed is zero. Now, do I know my acceleration? I'm not told anything about it, so I'm going to make it a question mark. I don't know and hopefully don't care. It turns out my acceleration will be in the negative direction. My acceleration will be in the left, so to speak. That's to make me slow down. If my acceleration was positive, it means that I would be basically be slamming on my gas in order to try to go faster before I hit this moose. That's a bad idea for me and the moose. So it turns out your acceleration will have a negative sign, but we won't worry about it for a moment. We hope we don't need it. Displacement, that's S. Displacement is 15 meters. So I'm going to say 15. And T, that's what I want. See, they say, how long does it take? Now that implies time. So I'm going to put a star by this. And this is sort of the notation that I like to use. So I have a question mark means don't know, don't care. And T means I want this. So basically now, as long as you have your four equations of motion, these four over here, I just have a shopping list. I'm just looking for an equation that, let's go back here and see, I want an equation that gives me T that hopefully avoids A. Sometimes it's not possible to avoid it, so that means you actually have to put it in, but in this case, let's just assume then, I just want time, and I want an equation that doesn't have A, because if uh, it needs it, then I need to find it. So I'm trying to be lazy here and just find what I need. So an equation that has a T, but no A in it. Let's take a look. Are there any equations with a T in it with no A? Well, not that one. Uh, maybe that one. Uh, not that one. Not that one. So actually, um, yeah, maybe I'll just use this second one then. So S equals U plus V over 2 times T. And of course, if you're ever solving a question like this, it really helps to write down what you're doing. So it helps to just write this down. This is a good test taking strategy for students, but uh, this displacement is u plus v over two times t. And then I just figure out what I need. Now v is zero, so that's nice, that cancels out. So that means I can say that s equals, by the way, I like to do the algebra first. A lot of students don't like doing it this way, but I think it's a good habit. So now I just have u plus zero over two is just u over two, and all that is times t. Now I wanna get t by itself. So that means I'm going to write myself an equation for t. Well, that means I have to get rid of this 2 on the bottom, so that means I have to multiply both sides by 2. So it gives me 2 times s. And I have to divide by u. So it's going to be 2s over u. That's going to be my equation for t. Well, then I just fill in the value. So it's 2 times 15. Divide that by 28. Well, 2 times 15 is just 30. Maybe it helps to get out my calculator. So I'm going to get out my little virtual calculator here and just show you how I would do it. So I'd say, well, if you weren't sure what 2 times 15 was, you can just say 2 times 15 and press Enter, but that's 30. And I would take that answer and divide it by 28. And I would get an answer of, well, this is 1 point, let's see, let's use two significant figures. So 1.1 seconds. That's the time it would take. So my t here, my time, is then, I like to put a little dot here to mean approximately 1.1 seconds. That's how long it'll take me to stop. So hopefully I have good reaction time. And hopefully I was paying attention and that's why I could actually stop before this moves. So that's just one example of how we can use these equations of motion.